Dodo. The dodo was a large, flightless bird that once inhabited the forests of the island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. Larger than a turkey, weighing up to 23 kilograms, this fruit-eating bird had a large hooked bill, undeveloped wings, and short, thick, yellow legs. It laid a single, large egg in a ground nest made of grass. The dodo was first reported in 1598 by Dutch colonizers, who characterized it as sluggish and unafraid of humans. Having lived as the largest creature in an island environment without predators, the dodo didn't recognize humans as a threat. This soon changed as humans became the most significant predator of these flightless creatures. Dodos were last observed in 1681. Their precipitous extinction is also attributed in part to animals imported to Mauritius by settlers, including pigs, cats, rats, and monkeys, which destroyed many of the dodo nests, eggs, and young. Until recently only a few fossil bones of the bird had been discovered, and, even though it existed during modern times, very little was known about this strange creature. In 2005, Dutch researchers found a large trove of dodo bones, including full adults and chicks, on Mauritius that will aid in uncovering more details of this bird. The dodo is best known for its humorous appearance. It had a large, oddly shaped, hooked bill, undeveloped wings similar to those found on penguins, unsuitable for flight, short yellow legs, and a silly tuft of feathers on its tail end. Although most depictions of the dodo show this shy bird as being fat and stocky, the wild dodo may have been quite slim, about half the size of its commonly reported girth. Dodos were introduced to the general public after being imported to Europe, where, it is speculated, they became more rotund in captivity. Blue Buck The blue buck was the first South African mammal species to become extinct in modern history. When European immigrants entered the region in the 17th century, blue bucks may have already been on the decline. Europeans further thinned blue buck populations through hunting and the rapid conversion of grassland to farmland, accelerating the extinction of this already threatened antelope. The last known blue buck was killed by a hunter around 1800. The blue buck, also called the blue antelope, looked similar to other species in the antelope family. It had two medium-length sweeping horns, no mane, and a darker coat on top with a white underbelly. The blue buck lived in the southwestern coastal area of South Africa and roamed the region's well-watered grasslands. The delicate blue buck may have preferred blossoms to bushes, according to modern research, the particular grasslands that this species inhabited were and are today some of the most biologically rich lands on earth. Not only is the soil especially fertile, but the plant life is also colored by an abundance of flowers, mostly of the daisy family. Velociraptor the Velociraptor lived during the Cretaceous period and became extinct about 70 million years ago. It belongs to a group of dinosaurs that has been linked to Archaeopteryx, also known as ancient birds. In fact, these dinosaurs are often referred to as raptors, a term that is also used to describe modern birds of prey such as vultures and falcons. Much smaller than its immense cousin Deinonychus, wolf-sized Velociraptor walked on its hind legs and used its long tail for balance. It was agile and quick. Although its hindquarters were much larger than its puny arms, the velociraptor made up for its lack of size with nimble hands that it used to grasp its struggling dinner. Velociraptor is best known for the vicious, curved claw on each of its hind feet that it used to kill its prey. Aurochs The aurochs, an immense species of wild ox, was a direct ancestor of modern domestic cattle. It was hunted aggressively by humans in part because it competed with domestic cattle for food, but also because its occasional interbreeding with domestic cattle disrupted development of domestic cattle lines. The aurochs population declined as its wild habitat decreased with the growth of farms and cities. The last aurochs died in 1627. The habitat of the aurochs extended across Europe and North Africa to Asia, and was domesticated in Asia around 600 BC. By 2000 BC, domesticated aurochs appeared in Greece and perhaps in India. This domesticated line eventually spread to Switzerland and Germany, and then to the British Isles. After the late 13th century, most of the aurochs population that remained could be found only in Poland. A few cattle breeds, including Highland cattle from Scotland, resemble their distant relative, the aurochs. What does the aurochs have in common with today's antelopes, goats, and hippos? They are all even-toed ungulates. Ungulate means they have hoofs, and an even-toed ungulate has an even number of hoofs on each foot, most with two hoofs per foot but some with four. Civitherium 
The Civitherium's habitat extended from Africa to Europe and Southern Asia, until it became extinct about 8,000 years ago. Although it was a member of the giraffe family, the Civitherium looked more like a heavily built antelope, and had a wide, almost moose-like snout. Unlike the long and lean giraffe, the Civitherium's body was stout and its legs were relatively short. Its powerful shoulders and short, strong neck supported a broad, heavy head with wide ossicones, or hair-covered horns. Not content with one set of ossicones, the Civitherium had an extra pair of bony growths that protruded above its eyes. Protarchaeopteryx The Protarchaeopteryx lived from the Jurassic to the Cretaceous period, and became extinct about 121 million years ago. This groundbreaking dinosaur was only recently discovered, it was first unearthed in the mid-1990s. The feathered Protarchaeopteryx looked more like a bird than a dinosaur. In fact, it is considered by some scientists to be a missing link in the evolution between dinosaurs and birds. Although Protarchaeopteryx robusta could not fly, its long legs suggest it could run very fast. Quagga Quaggas were native to southern Africa and were plentiful until the late 1600s, when European colonists in Africa hunted them for their meat and hides, and also for sport. By the late 1870s, the wild quagga population was wiped out. What remained had been sent to zoos in Europe. The last quagga died in captivity in 1883, at the Amsterdam Zoo. Quaggas were likely sociable creatures that moved in herds of 30 to 50 animals. They grazed on desert grasses and sometimes traveled in single file. Of the three species of zebras that exist, Equus quagga was related to the plains zebras that roam the grasslands of Africa today. Bush antlered deer. The bush antlered deer thrived across Europe and Asia during the Pleistocene era. It became extinct about 50,000 years ago. The first bush antlered deer fossil was discovered in Italy in 1841. This ancient, regal looking deer was crowned with the most elaborate set of antlers in the deer family. The two pedicles branched out from the top of its head, each ending in 12 tines. As with other antlered creatures, the bush antlered deer used its massive antler array not only as a weapon against rivals but also to attract a mate. Giant Camel The giant camel lived in North America in the Miocene and Pleistocene eras. An extremely large ancestor of the modern camel, the giant camel traveled widely across the United States. Fossils have been found in Texas, Kansas, Nebraska, Colorado, and Arizona. It resembled the modern camel and included standard camel luggage its well-known hump. Its hump and padded toes were probably two or three times the size of today's camels. Stochasosaurus. This theropod lived during the Jurassic period and became extinct about 145 million years ago. The Stochasosaurus is a mysterious creature, very little is known about this dinosaur. In fact, only a few bones, including a hip bone, a few vertebrae, and a partial brain case, have been found so far. Its sole claim to fame, Stochasosaurus may be related to the very popular Tyrannosaurus. Dwarf Sicilian Elephant The dwarf Sicilian elephant lived during the Pleistocene period and became extinct during the last glaciation. While many extinct Pleistocene creatures were extremely large versions of animals living today, some, like the dwarf Sicilian elephant, were much smaller than their modern counterparts in this case, the modern Asian elephant. This tiny pachyderm probably evolved from a much larger European elephant species that migrated south when the Mediterranean Sea was at a very low level. When the sea level rose, the dwarf Sicilian elephant became isolated on the island of Sicily. Like some other ancient animals, it underwent a process called insular dwarfism, animals isolated on islands can become smaller over many generations if a lack of predators makes it unnecessary to maintain a large size and smallness is an advantage if food is not abundant. Dwarf elephants also lived elsewhere in the Mediterranean on Malta, Cyprus, Crete, Sardinia, some of the Greek islands, and southern Italy. Diprotodon The diprotodon became extinct some 40,000 to 50,000 years ago, due to a combination of causes that probably included climate change, hunting by early man, and human use of fire, which changed the landscape and ecosystem. Fossils of these animals have been found only in Australian Pleistocene deposits. Like the kangaroo, Diprotodon had a pouch it used to carry its young. Unlike the kangaroo, it used all four legs for walking. Its head was similar in shape to that of today's wombat, and its huge body ended in a tiny, thin tail. This stocky marsupial may have been community-minded, 
living with others of its kind in herds. Doa de Curus. The Doa de Curus, an immense armadillo, was one of the Pleistocene megafauna that thrived in the southern Americas until 15,000 years ago. It probably succumbed to climate changes during the Holocene extinction at the beginning of the modern era. The Doa de Curus inhabited woodlands and grasslands, grazing on a variety of vegetation and possibly digging for roots and tubers. Unlike modern armadillos, Doa de Curus had a long, bony tail that ended in a dangerous, mace-like array of spikes. Its domed carapace of 1,800 armored plates was 2.5 centimeters thick and covered a protective layer of fat, which made it nearly impervious to attack. Its enormous size limited the number of predators that could take it on. But its size could also be a detriment. Doa de Curus was a heavy, lumbering glyptodont that could get wedged between rocks and stuck in mud, leaving it defenseless and vulnerable to attack by predators such as Smilodon, the saber toothed cat. The two beasts likely crossed paths after South America collided with North America around 2.5 million years ago, at which time northern carnivores such as Smilodon headed south while southerners such as Doa de Curus migrated north in an event called the Great Faunal Interchange. Kentrosaurus This dinosaur of the Jurassic period became extinct about 150 million years ago. The Kentrosaurus sported heavy armor, it had plates and long spikes along its back and tail, and a spike that protruded from each shoulder, which it used to protect itself from predators. Unlike similar ornamentation found on other dinosaurs, the Kentrosaurus plates and spikes were not connected to its bone structure. This slow-moving dinosaur walked on all four feet, but it could rise up on its hind legs to reach higher vegetation. Wara Despite the Wara's probable diet of penguins, ground-nesting birds, grubs and insects, and vegetation, immigrants to the animal's native Falkland Islands saw it as a threat to domestic cattle and sheep. Its tawny coat was also prized for its thickness. Settlers trapped, poisoned, and shot the Wara in large numbers. The last known Wara was killed in 1876. With its reddish-brown coat and white-tipped tail, the wara resembled other species of fox or a small wolf. Ancient cavemen may have warmed up to this best friend, the wara's comparative tameness has led some to suggest that it may have been brought to the Falkland Islands by prehistoric man and domesticated, retaining some of its domestic behavior after the original human inhabitants left. Elephant Bird The elephant bird lived on the island of Madagascar and may have survived until the arrival of the first humans there. The elephant bird became extinct about 350 years ago, possibly due to deforestation of the island and colonization. Although there is little evidence it was hunted extensively for food, elephant bird eggshells found in fire remains suggest humans probably stole eggs from undefended nests to scramble for breakfast. The explorer Marco Polo wrote of a giant bird that could pick up an elephant, fly high into the air, and then drop it to its death. Although his story may have played a part in giving the elephant bird its name, it was certainly a tall tale. Like the ostrich, the elephant bird was a ratite, it could not fly. Deinonychus The Deinonychus lived during the Cretaceous period. Until its discovery, dinosaurs were thought to be slow-moving herbivores. By contrast, this predator was swift and agile, and probably hunted its prey in packs. Deinonychus had an enormous claw on the second toe of each hind foot. Scientists once thought it used the claw in a slashing movement to kill its prey. New research shows this dinosaur more likely used it to stab and hold down prey while tearing it to shreds with its razor-sharp teeth. In any case, when Deinonychus is on the rampage look out. Thylacin Native to Australia and New Guinea, the thylacin also inhabited the island of Tasmania. The thylacin's extinction was due to several causes, including disease and competition by wild dogs, but most notably it was hunted by farmers and bounty hunters, who saw it as a pest. The last known thylacin died in an Australian zoo in 1936. Although the thylacin was a marsupial, it was the size of a small wolf and looked like a dog except for the parts that looked like a kangaroo, it had a tapered hind end and a long, stiff, kangaroo-like tail, which accounted for about half its length. It could balance upright and hop on its hind legs, stabilized by its rigid tail and also had a ready-made pouch on its abdomen in which it carried its young. Its short, coarse, brownish hair was reminiscent of yet another animal, with its distinctive black tiger-like stripes across the back. While the kangaroo was an herbivore, the thylacin's diet was markedly wolf-like, it was a carnivore. Cave Lion 
The cave lion lived during the Pleistocene era, and its habitat included much of Europe, Africa, and Asia until its extinction around 10,000 years ago. Humans successfully hunted it and may have contributed to its extinction. The extinction of many of the animals the cave lion preyed upon may have hastened the disappearance of this species. Also called the European or Eurasian cave lion, this massive cat lived in natural caves during the winter. Its size, speed, and strength made it a formidable predator. Its prey included such herbivores as primitive horses and bison, and possibly even humans. The male cave lion was unadorned with the stylish ruff of mane and matching tail worn by today's modern lions, going instead for the sleeker look of a major predator. Its one concession to fashion could be found in its coat, which had probably changed with the seasons, becoming white in winter to blend into its snowy habitat. Woolly Rhinoceros Early humans hunted the woolly rhinoceros, and it became extinct about 8,000 to 10,000 years ago. Many frozen remains of the woolly rhinoceros have been discovered, some well-preserved in oil-saturated soil. This member of the Pleistocene megafauna was similar in build to the modern rhinoceros, but it was well insulated with fat and covered in a thick layer of long, shaggy hair, which helped it survive in the cold, snowy conditions found across northern Europe and Asia. The woolly rhinoceros had two horns, one longer than the other. The woolly rhinoceros may have been a gardener at heart, it mowed the grass with its short teeth and sometimes using its long horn to dig up plants for dinner. Dimetrodon The Dimetrodon lived during the Permian period and became extinct about 256 million years ago. The tall sail on its back, its trademark feature, increased the size of its surface skin by up to 50%. This flashy sail may have been used to attract a mate. Unlike the free-floating bony structures found on the backs of some ancient creatures, the spines that held up Dimetrodon's sail were attached to individual vertebra. Dimetrodon was one of the first animals to have teeth of different sizes, which made it easier to eat a variety of animals. Although it likely chased its prey on land, Dimetrodon may also have waded in streams to catch fish. Dimetrodon may have been manner conscious, although many similarly sized creatures swallowed their prey whole, Dimetrodon chewed its meals before swallowing. Giant Warthog This extinct genus of pig lived in Africa during the Pleistocene period. It resembled the modern warthog but was somewhat larger. Based on the shape of its molars, the giant warthog is believed to have fed, like its modern counterpart, on grass, berries, bark, roots, and carrion. It was likely family-oriented, with a social life similar to the modern warthogs, one or two females with young formed small groups, which a male might join briefly during mating season, young males formed bachelor groups, but older males were solitary. Saber-toothed cat Saber-toothed cats lived in both the eastern and western hemispheres, beginning about 40 million years ago. They became extinct around 11,000 years ago. The saber-toothed cat, commonly called the saber-toothed tiger, was a large, powerful cat about the size of a lion. It had long, curved canine teeth shaped like sabers. Scientists have identified the fossils of three kinds of saber-toothed cats that coexisted in North America. The best known was Smilodon, recognized by its long, finely serrated canine teeth. Because its short, muscular legs provided power but not speed, the saber-toothed cat probably fed on slow-moving prey such as American mastodons. It would use its vicious, knife-like canines to deliver a fatal wound to the belly, throat, or neck of its prey. Some scientists believe the size of a saber-toothed cat's teeth may have helped it establish dominance among other cats or attract a mate, similar to the function of horns and antlers in other male animals. Short-Faced Bear the short-faced bear lived in the Americas from 1.6 million to 10,000 years ago. Like many other species of ancient megafauna, this giant bear became extinct at the end of the Pleistocene era. Possible causes for its extinction include the extinction of many of the creatures it preyed upon, as well as the development of weapons and hunting techniques by early man. The short-faced bear was almost twice as big as today's brown bear. With its short muzzle, powerful jaws, and formidable teeth, the short-faced bear was a dominant hunter capable of killing large animals. Its prey likely included bison, deer, elk, and camels. This massive beast may have been more diet-conscious than today's full-figured bears, its long legs and straight toes, while enabling it to run fast, also gave the short-faced bear a more slender profile. Stegosaurus 
The Stegosaurus lived during the Jurassic period and was the only plated dinosaur ever found in western North America. It had 17 attractive, triangular dermal plates, similar to those found in modern crocodiles and some lizards, along the length of its spine. Stegosaurus' weapon of choice was its tail, which was adorned with four vicious-looking spikes. In spite of its impressive weaponry, it became extinct about 145 million years ago. Ankylosaurus The Ankylosaurus lived during the Cretaceous period and became extinct about 80 million years ago. Ankylosaurid fossils have been found in North America and Asia. The Ankylosaurus had short legs, which limited its speed, but this immense tank of a beast was very agile. Besides its great size and armored plating, the Ankylosaurus' most notable feature was its club-like tail, which it could swing with great force. It could easily defeat even the largest attackers. However, unlike other dinosaurs armed with similar equipment, there is no evidence that Ankylosaurus used its appendage in tail-to-tail -tail combat with other males during mating season. American Mastodon This elephant-like creature roamed the spruce forests of North America until about 12,500 years ago, when it became extinct. Early man hunted the mastodon and may have contributed to its extinction. Well-preserved American mastodon fossils have been found throughout North America, especially in the northeastern and Great Lakes regions of the United States. Part of the extinct genus Mammoth, American mastodons belong to the family Mammutidae, which originated in North Africa 30 to 40 million years ago. Although Mammoth Americanum, with its shaggy brown coat, stocky legs, huge head, and flexible trunk looked like and is distantly related to the woolly mammoth, it's a distinctly different animal. The American mastodon was distinguished by nearly horizontal tusks and conical-shaped teeth. Its long tusks helped it to break tree branches, and its blunt teeth were adept at chewing the tough leaves that were a central part of its food intake. Dinosuchus The Dinosuchus lived in Texas during the Upper Cretaceous period. It belonged to the group Eusuchia, the true crocodiles. Dinosuchus was larger than even the biggest of the modern living reptiles, and was one of the largest crocodilians that ever existed. In fact, scientists continue to argue which crocodilian was the largest, Dinosuchus or Sarcosuchus, another immense creature that lived in South America and Africa. Dinosuchus was much like the modern crocodile. It very likely lived in similar habitats, followed equivalent mating patterns, and exhibited the same hunting characteristics of today's crocs, including the dramatic grab and roll technique for which crocodiles are famous. But its diet probably included one treat today's crocodiles never get to snack on fresh dinosaur meat. Gigantopithecus Gigantopithecus lived in Southeast Asia until about 100,000 years ago. This giant ape's extinction was likely due to a number of factors, including climate change and competition for the bamboo that made up the bulk of its diet. The emergence of early hominids, such as Homo erectus, may have added to the competition. This big ape was probably a ground dweller, as it was much too heavy to have moved through the trees like today's monkeys. It likely supported itself on its knuckles as it walked. In spite of its ferocious looks, the Gigantopithecus wouldn't hurt a fly, it was a vegetarian. This immense beast had to consume huge quantities of plants in order to fuel its massive system, and it had just the right kind of teeth for the job large molars housed in big jaws. In fact, the only fossils so far recovered of this creature have been jaw bones and teeth. Scientists have used these fossils to extrapolate the size, shape, and habits of this immense creature, largely by comparisons to fossils of similar species. Utahraptor the Utahraptor lived during the Cretaceous period and became extinct about 119 million years ago. The Utahraptor is the only known species of Utahraptor. This theropod walked upright on massive hind limbs, and, like its cousins Deinonychus and Velociraptor, it featured a menacing claw on the second toe of each foot that it used to kill its prey. Utahraptor walked with the sharp claws raised above the ground to protect its most valuable weapon. Giant Ground Sloth the giant ground sloth became extinct about 8,000 years ago. It ranged across the Americas, from Texas all the way south to Argentina. This gigantic, fur-covered sloth was a quadruped, but it could walk on its hind legs by steadying itself with its enormous tail. Some scientists believe this sloth may have been omnivorous, scavenging meat from animals killed by saber-toothed cats and other prehistoric predators. The giant ground sloth had long claws which it used to pull down leafy branches and dig up plants. 
With its immense size and formidable claws, the giant ground sloth had little to fear in the way of predators and could feed unhindered during the day. The Killer Penguin Killer penguins earn their name by pecking other animals to death. These psychotic penguins are misplaced tundra animals that were last seen on the island of Madagascar. With the classic tuxedo look and fiery red eyes, these killers are as aggressive as their name suggests. It is common for them to fight any animal, any time. Killer penguins will eat just about anything, and because of this, you shouldn't let any of your other animals near them. Ever. Oh, also, they tend to not like being fenced in, so the Zoopedia hopes you have a solid fence-building team. If you're looking for a more docile penguin that makes a better zoo resident, check out the Emperor Penguin.